gardeners are a generous lot, freely sharing their top tips and know-how to help out fellow green-fingered enthusiasts. But while advice is always dispensed with the best of intentions, it can sometimes be misleading. Beware the old wives' tales, and when it comes to gardening there are plenty. In this video we'll look at some common gardening myths and promptly debunk them, saving you time, effort and disappointment. The logic behind our first myth is that worms and microorganisms in the soil need to have contact with the compost ingredients in order to kickstart decomposition. But while composting directly on grass or soil certainly speeds up the process, it's not necessary. Compost bins work just as well on a hard surface, such as concrete or paving slabs. You can prime a new compost bin by adding some mature compost from another bin, or add garden soil along with the first batch of ingredients to introduce all those beneficial soil organisms. You'll be surprised how easily worms will make their way into a compost bin, even one that's sitting on a hard surface. Laying a thick layer of cardboard or newspaper at the base of the bin will help to attract them. Not all trees need to be staked when they are planted. Very young trees left to sway in the wind will develop a thicker trunk, sturdier branches and a more supportive root system. While grafted trees and trees older than two years will appreciate some initial support, stakes and ties should be removed as soon as possible to prevent over-reliance, which can lead to a weaker tree. The one exception is the very smallest grafted apple trees, which always need support. Check with the supplier if you are planting these. When using stakes, position the tree downwind from the prevailing wind so it can still sway a little. Keep ties fairly loose and remove the support as soon as you feel the tree can cope. This will normally be within one year of planting. It may seem counterintuitive, but you'll nurture a stronger tree. How many times have you added stones, gravel or crocks of broken terracotta pots into the bottom of containers to improve drainage? What this actually does is cause water to collect in the potting soil directly above. This layer of wet can harm roots, particularly during cold weather when all that moisture will freeze solid. Ensure adequate drainage instead by using good quality potting soil and by selecting containers with plenty of drainage holes in the base, or by adding your own. Stand containers on pot feet or pebbles so that excess water can freely drain out from the drainage holes. As an added bonus, pot feet also make life harder for slugs. We are often told that crushed eggshells create an impenetrable barrier to slugs. This may be true if they're laid thickly enough. Consider how many eggs you'd need to eat to protect anything more than just a couple of plants. Easier and better slug controls exist. Slugs congregate under dark, damp places, so lay planks of wood, stone slabs or upturned grapefruit shells in strategic locations, then patrol regularly to expose, collect and destroy them. Or set beer traps by sinking small pots filled with beer into the ground. Slugs love the yeasty liquid and will drown trying to drink it. You can also raise plants above the ground in wall-mounted containers, or protect crops in pots with copper bands or a grip-resistant barrier of petroleum jelly. Planting potatoes on Good Friday is an obvious myth because the date for Good Friday varies from year to year, falling anywhere between the 22nd of March and the 25th of April. Then of course there's the climate, which varies dramatically depending on where in the world you grow and your garden's own microclimate. The myth originates from the 16th century when potatoes first appeared in Europe. The tubers were treated with deep suspicion, with many believing them to be devil's food. To pacify any evil influence, Irish farmers planted them on the Christian feast of Good Friday. Of course, modern gardeners aren't bound by such suspicions and should be guided solely by their local conditions. Our garden planners plant list will help you to calculate the best range of planting dates for where you are. These are based on accurate frost data for your area, sourced from our database of thousands of weather stations. Peas and beans are members of the legume family. Legumes use soil bacteria to fix nitrogen from the air onto their roots. Logic follows that you should leave the roots of old peas and beans in the soil to feed the next crop, especially nitrogen-hungry vegetables such as cabbage. The problem is that your peas or beans will have used almost all the nitrogen up for themselves. Most of the nitrogen collects in the picked pods, leaving very little in the soil. 
To get the most from any nitrogen that is still left in the plants, they should instead be added to the compost heap, roots, foliage and all. Alternatively, grow field beans as a green manure or cover crop and dig the entire plant into the ground before they flower and begin to draw on the nitrogen fixed at their roots. Just because a pesticide is organic in origin doesn't mean it's necessarily harmless. Just like chemical pesticides, many organic substitutes won't discriminate between pests and the beneficial insects eating the pests. Take the insect killer pyrethrum as an example. While it kills aphids, white flies and hungry caterpillars, it also wipes out good insects such as ladybugs and lacewings, predatory insects that would have naturally controlled them. Work with nature and draw these beneficial bugs to your plot by building an insect hotel or by growing plants that attract them. Gardening is rich in folklore, but by separating fact from fiction, you can save yourself a lot of time and money. Why not share and debunk your own gardening myths in the comments section below, or subscribe and receive more great gardening videos based on tried and tested facts.